Hello, people. I am Jabby Kuei, joined by Achara Kirk. What's up? We're looking at the trailer to Mumbai Saga. It's starring Jean Abraham, Emron Hashmi, Mahesh Mandrekar, Sunil Shetty, Kajal Agarwal, and it is directed by Sanjay Gupta. This comes out March 19th, 2021, so mark your calendars. That's actually fairly soon. So just a few more weeks and you get to watch Mumbai Saga. All right, here we go. Why? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Expected. Just hand me the lead, sir. Just the day you gave me the promise, and you killed the player, I will be able to say that I gave you the promise. Oh, okay. 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 So what do you think? Do you think they're still against each other all the way to the very end of the movie, or do they team up at some point? Well, that's what I was wondering. I'm like, did they just give away the entire movie? Do I even have to go watch this now? I, I do, because I those I... action sequences are dope. You have to okay. absolutely have to watch this movie. It's so <laughs> worth it. I mean, the whole thing is basically like Heat, you know, with uh, Al Pacino and Robert De Niro, except it's way more heightened than that movie because of all the action. <laughs> You know that film's about two acting titans, whereas this is about like two action. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know a whole lot about Emron Hashmi, but John Abraham is certainly an action titan, yeah. and we hit, we know, we know we're getting a fight scene between these two in the bathroom. <laughs> of all yeah, places, I was like, getting tossed, oh, Emron yeah. Hashmi getting tossed around and is whatnot. Is this inspired by Mission Impossible? I mean. <laughs> There's been lots of movies with bathroom fight scenes, but sure, that's a re something in recent, recent memory. Yeah. Uh, but it's just the notion that you have this very formidable guy who is like something straight out of a Tamil action movie, right? You know, the guy yeah. who's for the people and he's tossing people through the ground, like, and they're just sliding around and whatnot as he's beating them up and, you know, kicking ass and taking names. And so you establish this dude who is a man for the people, from the people. Yeah. And then you put up against him a very, very confident, uh, determined, noble cop who's like, or you by think the book, he's noble. I'm pretty sure he is. It would seem to me that he's a, he's, I don't know if he's by the book, but he's certainly on the side of good as far as what's established by the law. Or at least he wants the money. Yeah. I mean, 
Nevertheless, he's on the side of good, and I, I'm imagining that as the film goes on, why are you so against Emran Hashmi? I'm not a, against Emran Hashmi as a person or an actor. I'm just going off of what I saw in this trailer, and I'm not sure. Like, I feel like he's a good guy. You think so? I you don't. Think he's tricking John Abraham, and then at the end, he's gonna be like, "Ha, got you, sucker." I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. It's a trailer, but I, yeah. I'm guessing he's a good guy. I mean, that would make sense. That would make sense. You like, you need to have a protagonist and an antagonist, right? I just thought it was interesting because when we saw the teaser, I wasn't sure. We I, arrived at a very different conclusion than this. Yeah, and I wasn't sure if John Ab or was it you or I? I can't remember, but we weren't sure if John Abraham was the hero or the villain, because he seemed like the villain, then in, in the beginning it seemed like he was the hero, so I was confused, because I was like, wait, hold on, he's doing a good thing by saying, like, you don't have to pay these yeah. people anymore, and so like you're saying, he's the people's hero, and then all of a sudden it's like, the power gets to his head or something, and then he becomes the villain. I don't think and the power gets to his head, I just think he's taking the law into his own hands, and he's not stopping. Uh, okay, I, okay, I, that also makes sense, I that's think, possible. I, I think that's just his trajectory, and he kills someone that's a really, really high value Value, and that's when the law steps in and is like, yo, you can't. No, we gotta stop. A hundred million dollar bounty on your head. Yeah. You know, that's that's where that goes. And so then Emron Hashmi steps in. He's like, what am I gonna do with all this money? He's like, yeah, I'm you know? so confident. I'm that good. I don't think he's a bad guy. Just because he's interested in the, the pot that uh, he will receive if he gets John Abraham, just because he has interest, a vested interest in that money doesn't mean he's a bad dude. I mean, a lot of Indian, Asian cops in general get paid off. Yeah, that's Does true. It, you know? I mean, maybe maybe this is one of those films where you're just not sure. Like, it's kind of gray, you know, where it's like, um, maybe John Abraham is a little bit bad, but he's got some good. And then maybe you think Emran Hashmi's character is mostly good, but then he's got a little bit of bad in him. Well, so. my, my reference to Heat is because in that film, the, the uh, protagonist and antagonist uh, respect each other. Right. And here, as far as it looks, you know, these, this is the, pro, you know, John Abraham, even though he's on the wrong side of the law, is the protagonist, and Imran Hashmi, even though he's on the right side of the law, is the antagonist. Yeah. But they respect each other. And that's what it's, that's what it seems to be communicated from the trailer, is, you know, they had that handshake moment where he's like, I, I forget what he said, I'm not gonna paraphrase, <laughs> but I liked a lot of the, the shots in this. Yeah. It, seemed, it felt very, very creative. I liked the scenario, the setting, the, um, the idea, the premise of this movie is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And the look of it is really nice. It's, I like that it's over the top action. It looks like a lot of fun. It's like John Abraham going back to what I consider his roots. You know, the way I was introduced to John Abraham was Rocky Handsome, if I'm not mistaken. And it was just like, pow, 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 like, you know, action, action, action. And he's, he's deviated from that in recent years and done other things. Um, I, I forgot the name of the movie, but the one where it was India's first nuclear missile. You know, oh, he, yeah. he did that film. I watched that in theaters by myself. And um, he did the one with the... Butler House. That Was that the one with the shootout? And it was like... Yeah, yeah and then like someone up. died. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he's he's deviated from like the hardcore action stuff for a while, but now he's coming back to it. And I'm, I like that stuff, you know, from him. I, I think that's pretty exciting. You know, I just need to see him, you know, uh, dead left a car and it'll be a, a <laughs> solid movie. So. I mean, maybe they didn't give away everything in the trailer. Maybe you still have hope. Maybe he'll like bicep curl a motorcycle or something. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so this is written, produced, and directed by Sanjay Gupta. This is very much his film through and through. It's a passion project for him, as far as I can tell. You know, given how many hats he's wearing. Like, right. It's pretty cool. John Abraham doesn't seem to age. Like, every single movie trailer I've seen him in, he looks exactly the same age. 35. <laughs> it's like, every single time. <laughs> it's a dude, like, is eating his vegetables. You know what I'm saying? And obviously exercising and whatnot. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but um, anyway, it's pretty cool. No, it's it's got it's got that cool kind of neo noir look, and it's funny to me that you know they've chosen to go with that kind of yellowy palette, which is the palette that often when India is portrayed by Westerners, that's kind of the color palette that they go for, and it's just. It's just funny to me that that would be the choice here when so many people seem to get really annoyed that, you know, 
oh, every time you see a movie from America or from the West about India, it's always portrayed in that kind of like color scheme? dusty yellow color scheme. Yeah, but I mean, but it, I mean, it works for this because it's kind of you know, it's it's setting the tone, it's setting the period. But that that's the cinematic Tony Scott look, though. It's very deep contrast, very you know. It's got the green tint to it, or right. the yellow, the yellow yeah, green tint. Yellowy if, green. If you go and watch, the, what's it called? The man, the, the Denzel Washington one. Man on fire. Man on fire. It's got a similar look to it. Oh, any, that's true. Any, any yeah. Tony Scott film made after 1990 sort of has this look to it. Uh, it's either this or it's blue, you know. But mm -hmm. Domino has this exact look. Uh, that was one of his last movies. Same exact look. So. Uh, Tony Scott, I feel like, kind of created the look and it sort of took over. He, he's used it, Michael Bay's used it, I feel like Ridley Scott's kind of used it. Uh, it's a very popular look for a reason. You know, it's 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 got, it's cinematic. If you go on your television, if, if, well, my television, if I go on my television and I try to go to the cinema mode, it's gonna try to elicit or create this look of like, deeper contrast and more tinted towards green or yellow. Hmm, that's you know? interesting. Um, and, when I was in Mumbai, it kind of looked like that. So I don't know what the fuss is all about. You know, it's like it's it it did kind of look like that. It has this sort of not every like people in real life don't have that kind of contrast to them, but it certainly had that sort of color palette. Sure. You know, but anyway, I don't know why we're talking about that. I don't so, know. It was just an yeah. observation that I made, and I noticed it uh, in the teaser as well, but but I hadn't spoken about it, and it's just you know it's just one of those things where I'm like. Oh, maybe, you know, people get annoyed when other people do it, but I don't know if anyone is even annoyed at this at all. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. just cool looking. Like, I think it, it is cool looking. It's very cinematic and has that kind of, you know, neo-noir feel. This is definitely a tale of like an unstoppable object coming up against an immovable force. What is it? An unstoppable force coming up, coming up against an immovable object. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Something. Whatever Joker said, it's that, you know, from The Dark Knight. Like, okay. it's, it's totally that, you know? It's, there, it's it's a collision of confidence, really, because they're both yeah. very confident in that they're gonna be the one to come out on top victorious. And only watching the movie will tell you the answer. I'm pretty sure they're gonna team up at the end of the film. They're gonna it realize- like it. They're gonna realize there's something deep-seated and corrupt. I feel like John Abraham is going to convince Emron Hashmi to join his side. And 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 Emron Hushman's gonna help him get away at the end. I'm still not 100% convinced that John Abraham is like a straight up good guy. I mean, I think it would just he's be... an anti-hero. Yeah. So anyway. Okay. We can All keep right. conjecturing, you know, <laughs> if you want. I'm just like I just I just think it would be so interesting to see him as a bad guy because he's always been you know a good guy to date. Or has he? I'm talking out of my ass, aren't I? I think he's always been a good guy. I really don't think he's bad in this movie. Okay. I feel like he's kind of a Rajnikanth sort of character. Okay. You know? Yeah. He, he showed up and he's like, no one pays uh, protection money anymore. Because as a, like, I'm here, I'll, I'll kill anyone I'll who does. I'll protect you, yeah. And you then know? and then it, it does definitely have that kind of classic gangster film where it's like, yeah, we know all these people are bad, but we're still interested in them and rooting for them anyway. It seems like he's trying to drain the pool, whatever that phrase is. Like he's trying to he's trying to cut the legs out from under the cesspool that is cor or corruption. He's trying to kill corruption is sure. what it looks like. And so when when cor when corruption has its hands pulling the strings of the law, like what do you do? You know what I mean? And so we would, we just watched Master that sort of explored that idea. Right, yeah. And, and so you you the only choice you're left with in this story, I'm not suggesting anything in real life, the only choice you're left with in this story is to bend the rules and get rid of corruption yourself so as to clean up the town. Sure. You know? Okay. Who knows if it will work. You guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Do let us know your feelings, your conjecture in the comments below. And uh, that's it for now. I'm Jabby Kuwait. This is... Achara Kirk. Peace out.